Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Yes or No, a weapon review series where I give a clear and concise answer as to what weapons you should be using in Battlefield 4. Today's weapon is the AK-12, a Russian-made assault rifle for the Battlefield Assault class. One of the most accurate guns in the game, its key feature is selective fire burst mode with a slightly higher rate of fire. But is the AK-12 a weapon you should be using in Battlefield 4, yes or no? No. In my time using the AK-12, I found it to be a very frustrating weapon. Not because it was particularly bad, but because it just brought so little to the fight. There is one narrow sweet spot where the AK-12 was effective, and I'll talk more about that later, but in general, every other weapon seemed to outperform the AK-12. But first, let's talk about what the AK-12 does provide. Among the assault rifles, the AK-12 has one of the least combined recoils, notably behind the SAR-21 and the AN-94. At .3 up, .17 left, and .12 right, it has some of the least combined side-to-side -side recoil in the game. Outside of its somewhat high first shot recoil multiplier of 2.1, the weapon doesn't fight your soldier very much. Particularly with its lower rate of fire at 650 rounds per minute, it's not surprising the AK-12 is one of the first guns you unlock as it's also one of the most forgiving. I can definitely see the appeal of this weapon if you're not used to recoil or if you have a hard time controlling it. One standout feature of the AK-12 is that the burst fire mode actually increases its rate of fire. While most other weapons fire and burst at the same rate of fire, the three burst shot of the AK-12 leaves the weapon at 750 rounds per minute. Keep in mind that the game still moderates the weapon to about 715 rounds per minute with time between shots. Additionally, like other burst fire weapons, this transfers the weapon's somewhat high first shot recoil multiplier to the third shot. At 14.7 degrees per second, the spread decrease of the AK-12 is actually pretty nice. This means that after you've finished firing, the AK-12 will reset its spread relatively quickly compared to, say, faster firing weapons. This makes disciplined burst fire somewhat more accurate than the M4 and M16, but not the AN-94. The spread decrease is also quite good at .084 degrees per shot. And that's really what you get from the AK-12. Accurate fire, particularly if you have difficulty controlling recoil because of experience or platform. But the problem with the AK-12 is not its accuracy, but its ability to deal with threats. And this is because the AK-12 absolutely crumbles under pressure. Let's talk about the gun's weaknesses now. The first shot recoil multiplier of the AK-12 is 2.1 times, meaning that your first bullet out of the chamber is going to kick 2.1 times the normal amount. Given that the weapon's upwards recoil is not trivial at 0.3 degrees, this can be a minor annoyance. However, if you fire the AK-12 in burst, you won't notice this until the third shot, making headshots somewhat more plausible. Even if you manage to keep the weapon in burst and have it firing at greater than 700 rounds per minute, the AK-12 just barely pulls up in the back half of DPS for assault rifles. The minimum time to kill is between 371 milliseconds and 338 milliseconds. This is the major Achilles heel of the AK-12, its inability to compete with most other weapons in the game, particularly at ranges closer than 25 meters, which is more than half of most engagements in the game. It's a pretty simple situation, you both see each other at the same time, and the AK-12 is the one that loses. I'm giving the AK-12 a no vote with only two main detractions about the weapon. I usually have more specific things to say about the weapons I don't like, but I want to draw a picture in your mind here of the two reasons why I'm inclined to no vote the AK-12, and that's the SAR-21 and the AN-94. The AN-94 is just flat out more accurate than the AK-12 and has similar time to kill. The SAR-21 is better in a close fight because of its hipfire potential, the SAR-21 also is easier to control at range, and has higher bullet velocity. Which leaves me scratching my head as to the purpose of the AK-12 now that it lives between those two weapons. So I ran some numbers. Just about every weapon is going to beat the AK-12 at closer than 25 meters with the exception of the other slow firing accurate weapons. However, at the transition, that's where the AN-94 takes over. I should point out that this is where the slower than average bullet velocity of the AK-12 also starts to matter more. At 600 meters per second, it's actually not bad up close, but as range takes over, we start talking about having to make big leads when shooting moving targets. This is not a problem the SAR-21 has at 650 meters per second, and even the AN-94 is better at 620 meters per second. And if we start talking even longer ranges, the SKS and DMRs become much more effective. It's not that the AK-12 can't have a good game or two, you just have to stay in that sweet spot from 25 meters to 35 meters to be in the winning zone for the AK-12, which is rather limiting. 
There's not going to be a whole lot to control in this weapon, as it's one of the easiest in the game. The recoil pattern is 0.3 up, 0.17 left, and 0.12 right. Again, the first shot recoil multiplier is a little high at 2.1 times. This means that the weapon is going to pull up and slightly to the left in automatic fire mode. To compensate, you'll be pulling down and to the right. Even in sustained fire, the bullet spread is not particularly fast, so there is a bit of durability to firing in longer bursts. But I'd recommend instead switching the AK-12 to burst fire. This changes the weapon characteristics in a couple of ways that you should be aware. For starters, the recoil multiplier transfers to the third shot. Next, the weapon will also be capable of firing roughly 700 to 725 rounds per minute depending on how well timed your bursts are. This makes it a bit better close up, but not by a lot. Now let's talk tactics on how to get the most out of the AK-12. The inevitable truth of the AK-12 is that if you are heads up with another enemy at closer than 25 meters, you are going to lose. Two things can possibly save you, headshots from you or the enemy simply having worse aim than you. Part of my frustration with this weapon is that in playing against other opponents that aren't completely brain dead, that second part didn't happen very often. The times that I did the best with the AK-12 were the times when I could outmaneuver enemies or keep them at an optimal distance from my weapon. This is a bit incongruent to my usual playstyle where I like to push points and get in the enemy's face. So there were a lot of frustrating moments where I'd need to push to turn around a match and simply could not. The AK-12 definitely lends itself to a more defensive or passive play than most of the other assault rifles. It has little to no panic power for defeating a surprise enemy that has gotten in close. Like the AN-94, the meta for the AK-12 is going to be that if enemies are close, you absolutely need faster killing power. The only way you're going to get that is with the G-18, and I prefer to run mine silent so that I can re-establish my position without inviting even more enemies to come and find me. The AK-12 is going to be a disaster for you if you try to use it at closer than 10 meters. There's probably a bit of hip firework you can do with the weapon if you like, but I found that unlike the SAR-21, I had a better chance when ditching my primary, the AK-12, and instead switching to my secondary. The somewhat slow reloads of the AK-12 at 2.3 and 3.2 seconds also make it unfavorable for intense close quarters situations. One of the things I always do for weapons is to look at BF4Stats.com's leaderboards for a particular weapon and then cross-reference those players with their loadouts on Battlelog. For the AK-12, nothing different here and what I discovered is that the top AK-12 users tended to prefer the heavy barrel and angled grip. Keep in mind that these are just players who have used the weapon a lot and are not necessarily a cross-section with actual top players. Nevertheless, I think the heavy barrel angled combination is pretty solid for the AK-12, particularly for players getting accustomed to the AK-12. That being said, what did I end up using? For my optic, I went with the PKA-S1X sight. You could probably go higher or lower depending on your preference, and I think if I were running with the angle grip, I'd go a step higher. For my particular loadout, I preferred the Russian PKA-S for both its nationality and slightly better performance at ranges beyond CQB. My accessory of choice was the laser sight. The hip fire is not great on the AK-12 and the gun honestly needs all the help it can get in CQB. Again, if you were running with the angle grip, you might actually choose to ditch the laser and go with a magnifier or nothing instead. Just keep your secondary on speed dial. For the barrel, I don't think there's any question here, you're going with the heavy barrel. You want to make this gun's accuracy work for you, and for that you'll want the heavy barrel. Again, this is going to be better than pretty much every other option for this gun, as the side-to-side -side isn't bad enough for a compensator, and the weapon is poor in CQB, so a silencer is also not great. Finally, for my underbarrel, I ran with the vertical grip. Much like the SAR-21, I wanted to have close quarters ability when I really needed it. For that, the vertical grip and laser pairing on slower rate of fire weapons usually works in their favor. The exceptions would be the heavier weapons like the M60 or Ace-52. Again, you may prefer the heavy barrel angled combination, but I recommend playing with both and seeing which you prefer. I didn't completely hate my time with the AK-12, like I have with other weapons I have no voted. This one was actually a bit of a coin flip. It has exceptionally good ranged abilities if you can keep enemies in that place. But it's absolutely terrible up close and the limits of its sweet spot are pretty confined. Add in the fact that the AN-94 does range better and the SAR-21 does CQB better and you have a weapon that is missing a bit of a roll. I think if I were to improve the AK-12, I'd modify its selective fire rates to be 600 in automatic and closer to its real-life counterparts 1,000 rounds per minute in burst. Additionally, more bullet velocity would go a long way to making it more viable at range. 
As for alternatives, I definitely favor the SAR-21 more heavily as it has a bit more ability to deal with threats up close with its bullpup hip fire. Additionally, it is a bit more manageable at range with less recoil multiplier and much higher bullet velocity. For a better all-around weapon, I think it's hard to go wrong with the M416. It reloads quickly and is generally serviceable at all ranges. Unlike the AK-12, I never feel like I have to nurse its shortcomings. That's it for this episode of Yes or No. If there's something you think I missed, or if you have a particularly different take on the AK-12, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a weapon you'd like to see reviewed on this series, leave a comment indicating which weapon. And once again, this series will return in Battlefield 1, and there's no prize but shame for asking in the comments. If you like what you saw, please be sure to force choke the like button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.